Um, all right, so we're going to talk about something that's really important, and it's, re it's something that we can apply in every area of our life, and it's the power of our words, the power that we have over our words and the things that we say and the things that come to pass and how God gave us this ability to use our words with power, and some people just don't understand what they're missing out on and how their words are bringing death into their life and into their situations. And I want to start off with um, Mark. So if we can turn to Mark, and it's going to be chapter 11. So in chapter 11, while you guys get there, um, it's a story of the fig tree. And uh, earlier in chapter 11, it talks about how uh, Jesus cursed the fig tree, and it completely died. There it's, he said, let no one eat fruit from it ever again. And uh, within 24 hours, when they came back to the fig tree, they were walking by the fig tree. Um, it says in, we're going to go into 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse was withered away. So Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. And it's interesting because I can imagine well, when Peter was telling this to um, Jesus, he was saying, Rabbi, look, like he was surprised. Even though when Jesus cursed the tree, he wasn't like, oh, maybe it's going to, you know, maybe it's not going to bear fruit. No, he said it will not bear fruit. And that's exactly what happened. But Peter here, he was shocked, like, Rabbi, look, like, what you said actually happened. And he says to him, have faith in God, like, super blunt, have faith in God. He wasn't like, well, maybe, you know, you got to really uh, watch what you say or, you know, have faith in him. He just said, have faith in God. That's it. Like, come on, Peter. And then he says, for uh, surely I say to you, whoever says to a mountain, is there any whoever's here? That includes everybody, whoever, whoever you are, male, female, whoever you are, says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And this is really powerful. Um, when it says this mountain, it's not, you can, not completely only referring to a mountain, but referring to something big. You know, if you say to anything, be removed from your life, any situation, any circumstance, anything like that. It's not, you know, let's go, think Vitaly or Zach were talking about it, let's not go around moving mountains, you know, moving Mount Hood into the city of Portland and things like that. But thinking about it in a bigger perspective, thinking about it with situations in our life that we can say to those things, we can say to problems, we can say to things that shouldn't be in our lives and they will be removed if we also believe. Because there's a lot of people, you know, we know it, they say something but their life is a completely different testimony. Or I know someone who on social media, they talk about how great everything is, you know, they make it look this picture perfect, but then in reality, in their lives, they're speaking death. They don't speak life. They don't speak um, with power. They just say things and they don't even realize the power that it has. In our words, as it says, it brings life and death. And I think I shared this testimony last week. But to me, this is a really um, simple thing that happened but it shows the power of our words. I shared how I received a plant, and I really like plants, if you guys don't know that. Today, I actually counted. We have 38 house plants in like our window ceiling and around our house, so we have a lot of plants. And one of our plants that I received got left in the car, and it completely fried, like black leaves. It was completely dead. And these plants, if you guys know anything about house plants, they're really expensive. They're not cheap. Um, with them trending, they're really expensive. So I took this plant home. I looked up how to take care of this plant, like how to recover a plant like this. And it says, no, it's dead. Like you can't do anything about it. You just throw it away. So what I did is I trimmed it. 
I fertilized it, I put it by the window, and I blessed it, and I commanded it. I say, listen up, plant, you will grow, and you will grow abundant, and you will fulfill what you're supposed to be doing in this house. And I blessed it for like a week. And I shared last week that the leaves started growing, and it's like a, they're big leaves that grow, and now I already have a full plant. But not only did I speak it, I expected this plant to live. I didn't just say, oh, this plant will live, but in my heart, in my spirit, I said, no, this plant will live, and I expect it to live. A lot of people throw their words around, but they don't expect it actually to happen. They just say, well, you know, yeah, it's going to happen, and they just throw these words out, but they don't believe it for themselves. And another example that I have is my brother, um, he bought a car recently, but before before he bought his car, he called me and he's like, hey, what do you think? Should I buy this car? You know, it's this kind of car. It costs this much. Like, I think it's a great deal. I don't know if I should buy it because it just came up on offer up and it's such a good price. It'll probably get out quickly. So I probably won't get it, but I don't, you know, but I really want it. I'm like, yeah, I guess you won't get it then. And he's like, well, thanks. Like, you know, what, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you said you might, you probably won't get it because it's a good deal. Isn't that what you want? No. Well, why did you say that then? Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, I I know, I guess. And, you know, he gets kind of defensive. Like, I do want the car. I'm like, okay, then say you will get a car, that car, and you will get a good price. I'm like, he's like, okay, okay. He does it. The next day he calls. He's like, hey, so I'm going to go buy the car. I'm like, so you got the offer that you want? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, see, it's that simple. And we overcomplicate it like it's this rocket science. Like, okay, God. If it's your will, I want this plant to grow. I don't want it to die, I want it to grow. If it's your will though, but it doesn't work like that. It's when we speak, those words have so much power when we use them. And we can see it all throughout the Bible. Um, If we're, we're gonna go into the next verse in Hebrew. And it is actually also in chapter 11. And it is in the beginning, verse 3. All right, so it says, um, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So this is showing the power of the words. The whole world was framed by the word. God made the word, the world, out of nothing. He didn't come up with some chemicals. He didn't take H2O and, you know, a little bit of salt and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, put it together, and the world was formed. By his words, the world was formed with nothing. It was something unseen. But... Our faith, that's how it should also be like. The power of our words. It should be things that even though we can't see them, we believe that when we speak it, it will happen even though we can't see it. It's like a chair. So if there's, there's a chair, this is a chair if you don't know. And when I sit in this chair, I expect that it's going to catch me. I don't wonder like, oh, is this chair going to like, is this chair going to catch me? Like, is that what it's meant to do? No, I expect in faith, I sit and I expect it to hold me. That's what it's supposed to do. This is a simple concept that's worldly. Like this is, um, what is the word? That as people, like this is just normal, right? When you sit in a chair, you expect it to happen. But with our faith, we should expect that there's a chair right here, even though none of us can see it. Is there a chair here? No, no one sees a chair? Okay, but when I sit in this, even though I don't see it, I should expect that it's going to do its job. That's what faith is with our words. It's when we say to whatever problem we have, if it's a problem, if it's not a problem, if it's I want that job and I will get it, I'm expecting to get it. I'm not going to boast like, yeah, I got the job, you know, but I expect that when I speak those words, it's going to pass, and that's what's going to happen. When God said, let there be light, there was light. When he said, let there, when he created the world, he expected it to happen. He didn't say, let there be light, oh, I hope it works, I hope it works, 
and it happened. He didn't do that, he just expected it. And that's something that I wanna encourage all of us in every aspect of our life, whether it's financially, whether it's with our families, whether it's in different situations, that when we speak something, let us believe it, not only just say it, but let us truly believe it and act upon it. There is another, oh, another example that um, I was thinking about today when, like that visual that I showed you with the chair, it's the same thing with baking. I was in the kitchen and I saw my mixer and some flour. I'm like, oh, it's the same thing. If I have a mixer, if I have flour, if I have eggs, if I have, you know, everything that I need to bake a cake, I use all that to bake a cake and I act in it. I visually see it and I begin to make it. But with us having faith with our words, even with the things unseen, it's us seeing none of that. We don't see the mixer, we don't see the eggs, we don't see the sugar. There's completely nothing in front of us, but we bake that cake out of it, if that makes sense. We just, we can't allow what's in front of us, the circumstance or what tools we have in front of us, to limit us to believing in what should happen and what we should expect. The next uh, Bible verse that I want to go into is Psalms. In in Psalms 33, it says in verse 6, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So, again, like was mentioned before, the, this is in Psalms 33, and it is verse 6. Sorry if I'm going too fast. Um, but by the words, heaven was, by words, all of this was made. It wasn't something that was some magical thing, or it wasn't something that was just, you know, science being put together, but it's with the power of the words that were used. And I have multiple, multiple testimonies where certain um, things in my life were not working out. And when I began to use my words with power and expecting things, those things happened. Um, I've shared this testimony, I think, multiple times, but I'm going to share it again. When I was going to college, um, I, was go- I wanted to go in to play soccer because I've been playing my whole life, and I was expecting to get a scholarship to play. And I got offers multiple different places, and some of them were too far, like in Florida, I didn't want to go there. I wanted to go somewhere locally, not too far from home. And I had um, one school, Concordia, I really wanted to go there. I ended up going there, and it didn't work out. Um, they gave me a small offer, and I still was trying to get in, trying to get in. You know, I, I wanted to get in, but I'm like, oh, it's too hard. I didn't use my words with power. I wasn't using them. And the situation, it didn't, go, it didn't end up going the way that I wanted to. It ended up going the way that I spoke. I spoke what happened. Everything that I spoke was exactly what happened. And I ended up not going to that school and I started speaking life. I started speaking, I'm gonna get into a better school. I'm gonna get a higher offer. I'm gonna, it's gonna be close to, um, close to home. I'm gonna get a better education. And that's exactly what happened. I spoke it and I believed it and I was expecting. And school was supposed to be starting in a few months. And if you know anything about scholarships, um, most, college athletes are signed a year or two in advance. It doesn't come up few months before. And few months before school was starting, I ended up getting an offer from a school I had no idea existed. It was a Christian school in Salem, and they offered me triple the amount of what I was gonna get at Concordia. It covered for most of my school. It was, everything lined up to what I was believing and saying, and It was at the beginning, I didn't even realize what I was saying. I didn't think at first that what I wanted actually existed around here. I didn't know that university existed. But over time, it all worked out because I spoke it and I believed it. And that's the testimony of our words. It has so much power in every situation. The other day I was driving, the enemy sent me a thought and I just started speaking life. And I started to speak against what he was saying. And that thought went away. It works, those words, resisting the enemy with our words. If you get a thought, speak out against what the enemy's trying to say to you. He's trying to bring death. He's not trying to bring life. But 
God, he gives, he comes to give us life and life abundant. And we have the power to use our words where we're able to bless other people. We're able to have a more abundant life in everything that we do. And I mean, there is just testimony after testimony that has happened in my life and my husband's life. I mean, over and over of our words. And I'll be honest, there is time, like before I understood this, I so wish I understood it because my life could have been so much more easier. It could have been so much, it could have been more blessed. I wouldn't have all these problems occurring. But I realized that why those things happened, it's not that God wanted those things to happen. He doesn't have, he doesn't want neg, he doesn't want bad things to happen. He comes to bring us life and life abundant. But what was happening was I was the one who was saying such horrible things towards my life. I was saying, you know, I'll never be good enough. I'll not, I'm not going to go to college. I'm not going to be able to do this. And I was the person that was limiting those blessings because I was just speaking death. And it's amazing that we have the power to change it because God wants you to have a blessed life. That's not questionable. He wants you to prosper in everything that you do and everything that you touch. He wants you to be blessed. And that's amazing. That's good news. Some people, they're like, oh, what do you mean? You know, you can just say, I'm like, the Bible says life and death is through the power of your tongues. It's that simple. It's not, raw, it's not a, you know, um, a hard concept to do. But for people to believe that they have that effect, they have a hard time understanding that because a lot of the time it's not visible. What they want is not visible and they're like, no, it's not that easy. But that's what faith is. It's not being able to see what's ahead of us, but believing and speaking it out. I know somebody who um, I went to lunch the other day and I haven't seen this person in a really long time. And we went out to lunch and from the moment we picked the place to go, everything was negative from her, everything oh, this place is not very good, I heard. I'm like, oh, do you want to pick another place? Oh, no, we'll go there. We end up going here. Oh, man, the parking is awful here. Oh, man, these seats are so dirty. Oh, man, these plates are not clean. Like, what do they use to clean it? And I'm like, man, your life is horrible, huh? Like, I don't know what to tell you. And I'm like joking around, you know. I'm like, man, like, yeah, your, your par- the parking's awful. Your seats are awful. The food's awful. Like, you know, and she was just like, what? I'm like, yeah, like, that's what it sounds like. That's what you're speaking. You're speaking that. And that's why your life is where it's at right now. And she's struggling with a lot of things. And it was like a reality check. I was, I was really hard on her, but we're ordering our food. She's like, oh, nothing looks good on the menu. I'm like, what are you talking about? This all looks good. I'm like, I bless everything here. I'm going to get something, whatever I get, it's going to be good, you know? And and then coffee. I, I love coffee. I'm, my husband's kind of a coffee fanatic and kind of made me a nerd at coffee. And I got a cup of coffee and she's like, this hot coffee is too cold. I'm like, no one can please you. I'm like, fact, actually, coffee above 205 degrees is not good. She's like, well, it's too cold. I'm like, even that, like, you know, and, but people live like that. People live with saying these negative things and a simple thing as the meal that they eat at whatever they order at a restaurant is awful. And they just don't get it. And that's the thing. When we start to realize the power we have over our words, I mean, plants that were dead will have life. Things in our lives that just don't work out, even a simple meal that you order and you say you're going to have a great meal, it's going to be a blessed meal. Um, another testimony, I'll wrap it up. Sorry, I, I just, so, I'm so excited. Like testimony after testimony, because it's a practical thing. It's not something that um, just happens, but once you start applying it, it works. And as you continue to do it, you see how easy it really is, how you don't have to depend on this world. You really don't, but you speak these things and you believe it. Uh, we were going on a trip with a few friends and the night before my husband, we were praying and he just blessed our trip and we are driving there and everything that we touched, everything where we were at was blessed. Before we got to the hotel room, we got an upgrade. There was an email that got sent. We got an upgrade. When we got to our hotel, we were on a, one of the top floors, had a great view. Every single restaurant we went to, we were amazed at how good the food was. The coffee was great. The weather was great. It's all these little things, but we blessed it, and we expected that we will have the best trip ever. And that's exactly what happened. And taking these 
little things into our finances even, you know, like blessing them and expecting that everything, your paycheck, everything in your home is blessed. Everywhere you go is blessed. Like it's so powerful. And I just want to encourage us to do that and apply it in our lives. And we will see a change when we apply it, when we believe it. And when